Today we're going to be looking at Eevee's new features in Blender 4.3 and how to use them. Stick around to the end of the video and as a bonus tip, I'm going to show you this add-on which pairs greatly with Eevee, allowing you to kind of mimic the way they do lighting and blockbuster video games. We have a lot to cover, so let's dive in. With Blender 4.3, we now have access to Vulkan Experimental Rendering. This will be replacing OpenGL. It allows for more multi-thread control, lower CPU overhead, and reduces load on GPU. It also gives developers direct control over GPU memory allocation. It basically improves everything. So if you struggle with lag in your viewport or anything like that, you might want to consider trying it out. Of course, it is experimental, and it only works on certain GPUs currently. However, it's pretty easy to enable here under the preferences. So go ahead and turn that on and see if you see improvements in your work this will only get better over time. Now here we have yet another powerful feature bringing us closer to cycles in Eevee. If I come over here, we can now enable multi-pass rendering in Eevee. So you can see that it's even visible up here in the render passes where we can look through our mist and we can look through our ambient inclusion, for example. But let's look at a practical example of how to use this. I'm gonna put this back onto combined and we're going to turn on mist. And you can see here, it's already active over here, we don't need to render or anything. I'm gonna drag that into image and to make that visible, I'm going to come down here to compositor and enable the compositor in the camera. And now you can see that we're getting these real time render passes. And if I click around, you can see it's working with my animation and everything, which is just really exciting. Now we're going to use this in a practical example. So let's add a mixed color and we're going to use this mist pass here to create a fog effect. So I'll drag that mist into the factor now I'll drag that image here into the top layer. And now you can see that we're getting a mist effect in our scene. If I come down here and search for a color ramp, I can then control how strong that is. So I can control the distance from the camera there so it doesn't fade off until it gets around here. And then we can also control the strength. So I'm going to come here and just lower the value there so it's not such a strong pass. Now here I can go ahead and change the color a bit. And now you can see that we're getting kind of a foggy pass all while using real-time compositing in Eevee. And this is just really cool because it seems like as technology is evolving, ray trace render engines and offline render engines are seeing the lines blurred and the differences between the two. Quick pause here. If you wanna help support the channel, check out my products, my courses, or my Patreon. I have a product called Dynamic Visual Effects Assets, which works in EV and helps create stylized visual effects assets for things like anime and more. Now, what I would consider the most powerful addition to EV this update is the ability to light link in EV. Now, this is something that we were able to do with Cycles for a while now, and having access to it in EV is going to open up a lot of new possibilities. So let's take a look at how we can apply this in EV. So up here, I have my owl character in the psych wall. And I recommend creating a new collection and just calling this a light link. And I'm going to call this one Al. Now what we want to do is add a light to our character, which will be exclusive to lighting our character and not the wall. So I'm going to add a point light back here behind the character. And just so that it's visible, I'm going to make it super bright just to make it visible for the point of this tutorial. Now what we want to do is add this to a light linking group. So what we're going to do is move everything we want into this light link group here for organization. And we're going to grab our owl character here. And then we're going to grab the light that you want to link it to. Now, if you hit Control L, you'll get this material menu that pops up. And this is where it gets a little confusing because this says link receivers to emitter and blockers to emitter. And you can choose to include or exclude. So if I do link receivers to emitter and hit include, what that will do is link it so that the owl is only affected by the light behind it. And you'll see here that if I click the owl and I click the light, you can see that all that shading menu work has been done for me. Now, if I check this, it will do the inverse and only light the background and not the character. Now, there's another problem here is that when you do the shadow linking, sometimes you can lose your shadows. So if I grab this and grab this up here and hit Control L and click Link Blockers to Emitter and do Include, that will do Shadow. I don't know why it's receivers and blockers. I think it should be light linking and shadow linking to make it easier. And exclude and include are just the inverse of this checkbox. Now, one quirk about this system is that when you do this control click L method, it won't allow you to select multiple lights. It'll only do whatever active light is selected. So one trick you can do is just reduplicating the light you have and it'll keep all those shading properties. Then you can just come over here and change the type of light if that's not what you wanna use 
And that way you can just avoid having to go through the whole process of setting up these light linking menus here. Now, this is how it works in cycles as well. And I'm hoping that in the future, they improve the interface and user experience, because right now I think it's a bit hard to use. We're gonna be using the ship in a bottle scene here as an example for our next feature. Now we have a checkbox here under fast GI approximation. So we've had this in cycles for a while, and now it's been brought to EV so we can easily enable or disable it. If you don't know what GI stands for, it's global illumination. And that's when we have those rays bouncing around our scene and coming back at the camera. This is a big part of ray tracing and why the lighting looks so realistic. It's also what takes longer to render. Now we have all the same options here where we can control the quality of the global illumination, but now we can turn it on and off as easy with the checkbox. So when it is on, it will go faster on your renders because what it's doing is trying to reduce the number of calculations by approximating or averaging out some of these rays and thus reducing the amount of rays it has to trace to give you your final image. And when turned off, you should get better results. Now, the great thing is here that in simple scenes like this, as you'll notice when it's on or off, there's almost no difference. So it's great to leave it on in these simpler scenes and save on render time. However, if you're working in larger scenes like this example here, it can make a noticeable difference visually because you have much more lights bouncing around more complex geometry and textures. So maybe consider turning it off for these scenes to improve the visual quality of your renders. Now, if you've ever played a big blockbuster video game, you may wonder how they get these cinematic and dynamic lights all while running at 30 or 60 frames per second on a small console. Well, they use a technique called light maps, and this is where you bake the light into the scene and then they're only lighting a couple elements. So rather than lighting the entire environment at once, they're really only lighting things like the characters. Now, the problem with baking in Blender is that it's just overly complex and requires you to set up too many nodes and you have to do it every material, every object, and it's just kind of a miserable experience. But that's where this amazing add-on called Simple Bake comes in, which is relatively cheap on Blender Market. I'll link it below. It's not an affiliate link. I'm actually using it in this scene here. Everything in the scene has light baked into it, except for this character which as you can see is still dynamically reacting to the light when I drag them in and out. So I'm only spending my rendering power lighting this one character. And it has other advantages as well. If I zoom in on this tree here, you can see all the lighting is baked in. So I can just reuse this one texture on all of these trees here and they all kind of have simulated light baked into them. So let's look at how we can use this add-on really simply. So here I am in cycles in a simple scene here. And if I come over to the render tab, after I have the add-on installed, you see that I get a lot of options here. Now you have a lot of control here and you can do quite a bit. I'm just going to show you a couple quick, simple options. PBR bake will allow you to bake all the PBR materials in, but I wanna do cycles bake, which is just going to give me one emissive light layer that has everything included. You can create setting presets here. You can choose what objects you wanna bake. So I'll go ahead, add both of those now, and you can see we have plenty of objects there to manage those as well. Here you can set what cycle settings you want. Here you can set special bakes if you wanna bake other types of things like thickness or light maps. Down here in texture settings, I can determine the texture resolution. So let's go ahead and just bump that up to 2K. You can see we have a couple options there as well. Under the export settings, I'm gonna turn on export bake, and that will put all these folders into this little subfolder here next to our project. Now, here I can set new UV maps. This is extraordinarily helpful if you have kind of a scene where you've imported a lot of assets from other places and they're utilizing the same material, it will automatically unwrap all those materials and detect UDIMs as well. Now, if I come down here into other settings, I can turn it on to copy objects and apply bakes and hide the source objects. So that it'll automatically apply all those materials for me. And then if I come down here, I can choose if I wanna render this in the foreground or the background. You can also come up here to your cycle settings and determine your sample rates, your open image denoising, and all of that. So I'll go ahead here, click bake, and you'll see here that it gives me a progress menu. Since this is a simple scene, it shouldn't take very long. Once it's done, it'll give you this menu right here. You can click okay. And now you see I have a new collection where these baked objects have the material supply. So if I switch over to material preview here, you'll see that it actually looks just like a cycles render. And that's because all those images have been plugged in there. So I can switch over to Eevee here and see yet again, when I switch to render mode, everything stays just as if it was in cycles with full lighting scene. So you can bake all your lighting into your environments this way, and then just light your characters or other props and save a ton of time on rendering with a simple add-on.